Uh, it's a great privilege to introduce to you uh, the Honorable Justice Hassan Bubakar Jallo, who is the prosecutor of the International Criminal Tribunal for Rwanda, to provide closing remarks. Justice. Um, I'm greatly indebted to President Bill Newcomb for having invited me to this occasion and also for having given me an opportunity to participate in this process of the, of the, of the project. But I think all of us are more greatly indebted to him and his, and his team for the conception, the formulation and development of this rule of law index. Because we, we do realize, there is a growing realization worldwide that uh, the rule of law, of course, is indispensable. It's absolutely necessary if we are going to have justice, if we are going to have peace, if we are going to have social and economic progress. None of, <clears throat> none of these can be achieved on a sustainable basis in the absence of respect for, for the rule of law. And when we do talk of respect for the rule of law, we, it boils down to the four principles which the project has identified as the need for accountability of those people who are in positions of leadership, the need for equality of the law, the equal application, equality before the law, the equal application of the law by judicial institutions which are not only effective, efficient, but also independent and, and impartial. Without these indices, you cannot really say that you, you have the law, rule of law uh, operating in a particular jurisdiction. And you, without them, you are really planting and nurturing the seeds of conflict uh, for, for, for the future. We are greatly indebted to your team, Bill, because you have provided us today with, uh, with, with an index which is a measure, which is an instrument for measuring the achievements of nations, of communities uh, in this particularly difficult area. It's also equally an instrument for guidance of those communities uh, which wish to move forward towards entrenching rule of law uh, within, within their own systems. Uh, and I would like to emphasize one thing, that in this whole process, uh, it, it's been a very universal approach that has been taken in formulating this index. This is not an American index nor is it a European index. The, the Africa region participated in this, in this particular process uh, in Ghana through the regional conference which was held. There were other regional conferences worldwide in order to, to, to be able to get some input uh, from culturally diverse regions of the world as to their own concepts of, of, uh, of, of the rule of law. So what we do have here is really a universal standard relating to the, to the rule of law. And well, the challenge that now remains for us, of course, is to make sure that it does become a, a standard of achievement, much as the Universal Declaration of Human Rights has come today to be the standard of achievement for, for mankind. What happened in Rwanda in 1994 uh, presents the world with one of the most tragic consequences of a breakdown of the rule of law. Uh, consequences with which we have been grappling for the past decade and a half. Rwanda up to 1994 was characterized by uh, impunity. There was no accountability. There was no respect for the rule of law. There was uh, legal uh, discrimination of the minority of the population. And, and eventually in 1994, this exploded into a situation of a genocide resulting in the death of almost a million, uh, some say slightly over a million people uh, within a hundred days. <clears throat> we have, in, in our tribunal, which is based in Arusha, Tanzania, uh, created by the United Nations in 1994, been trying to, to bring justice to the victims and the survivors of, of that great tragedy. We have been able to hold to account, <coughs> sorry, to hold, to bring to account several of the persons who played a leading role, a re leading role in that tragedy. Uh, we indicted some 93 personalities, members of the government at the time, members of the military, heads of the military, 
uh, provincial administrators, and so on and so forth. Thank you so much, Juan. Thank you. Media people, uh, people belonging to other professions, even the clergy. And over the past 15 years, we've been able to prosecute most of them, and now we are at a, at a phase where we look forward to closing down our work. But our success, I think, has not only been in terms of the numbers and the status of those people we have prosecuted, but the impact that our work has had on, on the ground in Rwanda itself, in terms of developing the rule of law, encouraging law reform, capacity building of the judicial institutions, of all those institutions which together work towards making the rule of law a reality. So we could say today that Rwanda, partly because of the work of the tribunal, and also in collaboration with the government of, of Rwanda, that that jurisdiction has, has improved significantly uh, in terms of respect for the rule of law. But the, the, the point is that these kinds of tragedies occur when you have a systematic and prolonged breakdown in the rule of law. Rwanda is a typical example of, of that sort of situation. So it is very important that we try to build and nurture and sustain in each, in each community uh, a continuous respect for the rule of law. Africa, of course, has come a long way since Rwanda in 1994. Uh, overall, despite trouble spots in the Congo, uh, in Sudan, and more recently in, in um, Ivory Coast. And incidentally, you may have read in the papers, either yesterday or today, uh, the former head of state of, 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 of uh, Ivory Coast has been sent to The Hague to stand trial at the ICC in respect of uh, on charges of crimes against humanity. So despite those few trouble spots, the situation in Africa in terms of respect for the rule of law has improved significantly. More and more countries on the continent um, have designed and put in place the necessary institutions uh, which would assist in ensuring that the rule of law becomes a reality, uh, in respecting the independence and, and in the impartiality of the judiciary, uh, providing for its effectiveness, providing bills of rights. Beyond the national level, Africa also has uh, in place an African Charter on Human Rights with a, with a mechanism for investigating uh, violations of human rights in the continent and providing remedies. It has also put in place an African Court on Human Rights with, uh, with the ability, with the mandate to provide binding decisions against governments which violate the rights of their citizens. Our concern with accountability is reflected in the fact that today Africa provides the largest number of states party to the International Criminal Court because, uh, because of our, our, our belief that accountability, if it cannot be secured at the national level, needs to be secured at the international level through the system of international criminal justice. And that this is important in order to be able to maintain peace and security and, and progress. It is important also to, to realize that even when we speak of, for instance, of the Arab Spring, that really the countries which are involved in the Arab Spring are African countries. It's Egypt, it's Tunisia, and it's Libya. And more recently, of course, we have Syria. But the, 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 the Arab Spring is essentially an African expression, African rejection of dictatorship, and African yearning for respect for human rights and, and the rule of law. There's been this uh, significant progress, and I think, as the senator said in his, in his few remarks, that one of the best things that can be done uh, is to provide support to Africa through foreign aid assistance, through NGO support, to ensure that this momentum towards ensuring better governance on the continent uh, is sustained. I think that that is, that is particularly important. We, we look forward to securing that kind of support to make sure that there is no going backwards, that the efforts that the governments are making, both at the national and the continental level, as I described earlier, uh, are secured uh, and, and carried forward. Uh, I would like to thank you very much for having given me this opportunity to speak briefly uh, about our own experiences. Thank you.